Hi everybody, it's Cindy at Upcycle Design Lab. If you've seen my last couple of videos, you know that I've been working on a lot of different bleach designs for t-shirts. And I'm gonna kind of continue on with that today. We're not gonna be actually bleaching a t-shirt, but I am gonna be trying to transfer uh, a picture into art that can be put on a t-shirt. So if you're interested in learning how I make my templates or seeing some of the actual bleach projects, I'll put the links uh, up here in the video through, up here in the corner of the video <laughs> throughout the video. Um, but today what we're gonna be doing is taking just a basic photo. This is one of my lovely puppies and making it into sort of a black and white cartoon looking sort of art that you can put onto a t-shirt then. So the software we're gonna, we are gonna be using is called Paint. It's free to download. I'll put the link to the download in the comments of this video. And if you know how to use any kind of um, drawing software this might be a little too basic for you but if you've never used anything before um, I'm going to go through a lot of the different tools and we'll just sort of take it from the top and paint is a great place to start if you've never used anything because like I said it is free to download so let's get started all right so this is what the paint software looks like once you open it and the first thing that we want to do is to go to the art that we want to use, the photograph that we're looking for. So I'm just going to navigate to that file and open it. And then I want to just kind of crop out the, the part of the photo that I want to use. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the toolbar and I can either do the toolbar as a drop down or I can go over here where this little hammer is and click that and then the toolbar stays open which I kind of like to have my tools open so that's good so this is my cropping my this is my rectangle select tool so I'm going to select that and then I'm just going to use it I'm going to click and draw a box around the part Oops, I'm already messed up. So this is my undo button over here. I need to start over a little bit farther so I can get her all of her ear there. And then I think I want to just kind of go down about like that. So now that I have the area selected that I want, I can go up to this little crop to selection button here. And I'm going to click that. And then I've got my image cropped to the size that I want. All right, the next thing I want to show you is the layers palette, which is over here in the right hand corner. So if you click on that, you'll see this box show up and you can actually grab these and move them around if you want to, but it's kind of in the perfect spot down there at the bottom. And I want to make a couple of copies of this picture because I it's it's too easy to kind of mess things up so I want to make sure that I have a, a, a copy of this so if I click on this icon right here I can make some copies so a couple things about the layers palette if the box over here is checked then that layer is going to show up and if you're clicked on a certain layer where you can see the whole thing highlighted, that's the layer that you're going to actually be working on. So I want to work on the top layer. And I want to erase this background because it just helps uh, with the rest of the process to have a little bit cleaner art that you're working with. So I'm going to select the eraser tool. And there's a brush size of two, which is pretty small. So you, what you're going to see here is I'm going to try to erase a little bit here. And what you see is that it's not really doing anything. And the reason that that is is because I have all these other layers here. 
So I really have erased a little bit on this layer, but because this is still visible underneath it, you don't see what I've erased. So I want to uncheck these boxes. This is my last layer, I guess. So when I uncheck this, you should see that I've done some erasing on that top layer. And there you can see it show up here. So I just kind of have these. They're not, they're not showing up now, but I have them as a backup just in case. I messed something up on this layer. So I'm going to move my palette back down. I can't seem to do that, so we'll just forget about it. All right. Um, so I also want to zoom in a little bit because I'm going to start working around the edge of, of her head. So I'm going to zoom in using the menu bar up here. And then I'm going to find this little hand tool. The, it's called a pan tool. I'm going to grab that so that I can get to the top of her head. And then I'm going to go back and get my eraser. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to try to get around her head. I'm going to erase. And once I get her outlined, I can go back with a much bigger brush to get rid of the rest of the background. So I'm going to erase this whole background, save the project, and then I'll be back with the next step. All right, here's where you have to kind of just play around and practice a little bit. But basically, we're going to, you know, we're turning this art into just a black and white image. So you have to kind of select the parts that you want to be white and the parts that you want to be dark. Now, if you're artistically inclined, you probably don't need this software and you can just sketch it out. I mean, you can see that she's much darker here than she is over here. Obviously, this is a very light part, but you do just kind of need to play around with this magic wand tool because what it will do is it will select things of a similar light or darkness and it'll select a bigger area or a smaller area based <clears throat> excuse me on the amount of tolerance that you put in or out of it so just to show you um what I do is I start with the magic wand tool. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to start on the very lightest part of the image, which is her eye right here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to click the magic wand tool right on that light part of her eye. Now you can see that it's not getting quite all of the white of her eye. So I'm going to click the tolerance up just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to click it up a lot just so you can see what happens. See how it suddenly grabbed all of the rest of this? Which isn't totally bad because I probably do want some light and dark, you know, I want all of this to be the lighter color. So this is where you just have to sort of make some decisions and play around a little bit with it. But I'm going to try this out. I think actually that's okay. I might want all of this to be white. So now that I have it selected, I'm going to select my paint bucket. And I need to go over to the right hand corner again and open my color palette. So I click on that up here and it opens this color palette here. Now right now this color is on the black color is on top and that's the color that I'm going to fill with if I use the paint bucket right now. So I want this area to be white. So I'm going to switch that with the little arrows here. And now I should be filling with white. So I've got my paint but paint bucket selected and I'm just going to go inside this area and click. And you can see that it filled it in with white. So now I'm going to unselect that area and I'm going to go to another 
pretty light area like right around here in her ear. I'm going to use the magic wand tool and I'm just going to select. I probably have too much maybe. I have a pretty high tolerance. Yeah, so I don't want to do that. See how it's selected everything? So I want to take the tolerance back down. That's kind of an interesting white shape there. So I think I'm going to go ahead and fill that with the white. And then I want to zoom out just to kind of look at it. One note, you, you can save layers at any point. So if you've gotten to a point where you really like it and you're afraid you might mess it up, you can save that layer so you can go back to it. You can also undo things. So this is just sort of a place where you need to play around and kind of see what you're going to end up with. I think for, I'm going to switch to the black fill for a minute here just to see how that turns out. So I'm going to get the magic wand tool. I'm going to kind of click in this area here. That's gotten kind of a lot. It's too much to look at, so I can't really I can't really tell what's happening. So I'm going to undo some of this. Take the tolerance down. The curious thing is that I don't know if I want to fill this with white now because this obviously needs to be black around the edge. So this is what I'm talking about. You kind of need to play around with it a little bit. I think maybe I'm going to fill that with white and just see what happens. You want to start with some of the smaller areas too, like the things that really define her face. So. You can see how that's growing a little bit as I adjust the tolerance. I kind of want it to go all the way over to here, so I'm hopeful that if I click just a little bit at a time, I'm going to get that whole part of her nose there. Alright, so I think that's kind of a good area to fill with white. So I'm going to go back and get my paint bucket and fill that in. Certainly down here is a lighter area. This could be too much here, I think, because this is probably lighter. Let me grab this and see if that's okay. As I'm adjusting the tolerance, I'm hoping that this selected area goes down into here. You can see it growing a little bit. And there it is, so that's great. So I'm going to fill that with white. Right, so I'm just going to continue on with the white. I'm going to try and really, I'm going to zoom in and try to kind of just grab some of these smaller areas in the top of her nose, around her eye, on the top of her head, kind of down here by her mouth, and just fill in with the white. So I want to get zoomed in pretty close to do that. 
And don't worry about how rough these edges are right now because we'll go back and smooth those in, smooth those out later. So I've got my uh, magic wand tool. I want a pretty low tolerance, I think. And I'm just going to work on filling these areas in with white. All right, so now I've got what I uh, a, a basic black and white image that reads pretty well. I can see the definitions that I'm looking for. So what I need to do next is kind of go in. I'm I'm going to put an outline around her so she's got a nice black outline, and then I'm also going to smooth out some of these edges so I have some slightly sim simpler shapes to work with and fill in some of the areas. And to do that, I'm gonna use the paint brush, which is the tool right here below the paint bucket. And I've got a brush width of 60 right now, which is probably a little bit too big, but it may be about 30. And so that to start, I'm gonna actually do the outline around her. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to switch my colors because I want my outline in black. And then I'm just going to use my paintbrush to go around the edge. I can use the pan tool when I need to move. Grab the paintbrush back. And just do an outline around her head her whole shape. And now that I have my outline drawn, I'm going to switch to the white color with the paintbrush and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to fill in some of the areas to make them a little simpler, cleaner. And smoother. And if I need to, I'll switch back to the black to fill back in with the black. So I'm just going to be kind of cleaning up the image, making sure that it still reads nicely as a black and a white image. Mm.
All right, I'm just about finished here. I'm going to zoom in on this last little part right here using the zoom tool and try to clean this up. All right, so here's my completed art. Um, and because we want to print it bigger than 8.5 by 11, which is the paper that I have to print on, I want to divide this art into e even quarters so that I can print it and then piece it together into a bigger piece of art. So before I do that, I want to go over here and add a, add a layer. You can see right here there's nothing on it but this is the layer I want to be working on. So I also have turned my rulers on over here. You can see at the top, if you click on and off, that you have a ruler bar up here on the top and the side. And I can see that my art is 26 and a half inches roughly. So that means I want to draw a line at 13 and a quarter. So I'm going to select the line tool over here and I'm going to line up in the middle of my art at 13 and a quarter. Is that what I said? You can see as I move my mouse there's a line that moves on the ruler so you can see right where you are. So I'm going to click and drag my line down and you can see as I swing the line that the ruler the line on the ruler is moving too so that will help me get the line straight once I get to the bottom so I just want to make sure that it's lined back up on 13 and a quarter 13 I do it at 13 and a half though so let me redo that for 13 and a quarter there we go. And then on, I'm going to draw one in the horizontal line. And my art is 30 inches. It's a little hard to see, but so I'm going to draw my line at 15. And I want it on this layer. So I've drawn the two lines on this layer number five. So you see if I click it off, my art is still intact on the, on the second layer. All right, so I could go ahead and crop to these four sections and print, but paint does have some limitations on, on printing if you go to print, you only have options for a full page, a partial page. Um, you can do 8 by 10, but that will still give me a, an image that's just way too big. So because the art will be resized to what I, I'm going to use 8.5, or I mean 8 by 10, I need to kind of crop the area larger than just the quarter squares that I've divided it into. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but um, so in order to do that, I'm going to add another blank layer. I want it to be on the top, and I'm going to use the rectangle tool. And I'm actually, I've switched colors here, so I'm going to use red so it's really easy to see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle. 
and I'm just sort of estimating based on another other art that I've done, but I want my art. I need, oh, I don't know how to explain this. Anyway, I'm drawing the art, I'm drawing this rectangle about two inches larger on both sides than my square. And now I'm going to crop to that area. So I'm going to draw, I mean, I want to leave the white lines because that's how I'm going to match up the art. But I want to draw the cropped area all the way to the red line. And then I'm going to go up here and crop selection. And the white, the white line is the actual part of the art that I want to use. So this rest of this is going to be overlap. But when I go to print it, I want to use 8 by 10 and I'm also going to fit picture to frame. But you can see it makes it a little bit smaller. So just from experience, I kind of know that this is going to yield a better size print. All right, I actually did a test print on that, and it was still too big. So I've made my rectangle larger, which will ultimately make my quarter piece smaller. Not sure if that's making any sense. But um, the reason that I put this red rectangle on a separate layer, what just happened to my layers, there there, is so that I could easily move it because I want to keep this rectangle the same size and I want to move it over to the other corner. can use the arrow keys if I need to, to just to get it right to the edge. And then I'm going to deselect that. And I'm going to get my rectangle selection tool and I'm going to select the rectangle again. And crop it. It's not a very good crop. I'm going to go back. Try again. I'm going to get right to the edge. Went over. I went over a little bit. It's better. Okay. Now I'm going to do a print selection again. And I just you just want to make sure that you're always printing the same way for all four pieces. So I want to do 8 by 10 again and I want to do fit picture to frame. And then I'm going to print. Alright, so once I've printed it takes me back to this uh, to my art, but I want to get back to the whole piece of art, so I'm going to do the back arrow. And then I'm just going to move my rectangle down to the two bottom pieces and repeat the printing process so that I have all four pieces that I can tape together in a bigger piece of art to put on my t shirt. All right, so this is just to recap a little bit. Um, this is the photo, obviously, side by side with the black and white image. And then this is the template on the shirt and then a close up of how the shirt turned out. And then this is the reverse image of that same dog on a different shirt. And because I have two dogs, I had to do a little bit more art. 
So this one I think maybe turned out a little bit better as far as the design. This photograph is just to show you the templates in a positive and what I'm calling a negative version. So on the black shirt is the positive will be the positive version of the art and the gray shirt will have the negative image once the shirts are bleached. So here's a picture of the positive version side by side with the template. And then the negative version of the art as well. So that's it for today's video. I know it was a long one, but I hope you found it helpful. If you're interested in more details on the bleaching process or how I make my templates, I will put the links to those videos in the comments of this video. Thanks again so much for watching, and if you like upcycling and repurposing items, I hope you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel and also check out my blog at www.upcycledesignlab.com.